Hey everyone, it's Adam. Welcome to my Home Studio 2024 video. At the beginning of the year, I purchased a boatload of gear from Blackmagic to upgrade my home studio. So let's get started by changing the scenery. Whoa, what just happened? Let's try that again. Wow, what's happening here? Clearly, I've created a virtual set in my office using a green screen and the Blackmagic Design Ultimat product. But that's not all that I purchased. Let's take a look at what the studio looks like right now. So over here, I'm using my iPhone 15 Pro camera with the Blackmagic camera to show this, uh, to show my office. If you see some kind of vertical shearing or horizontal shearing, that's probably because of the HDMI connection into the constellation. I'm using a bunch of HDMI extenders. Instead, what I should be using is probably like an SDI uh, to an HDMI to SDI converter. <clears throat> at any rate, let's take a look at all the hardware that I have going here. So I have a mobile rack here. It's a, I think it's a 10U, 9U um, rack rolling case. And I have here the ATEM Constellation 2ME HD. Below that is the Blackmagic Design Video Hub 20x20 12G. Then I have two HyperDecks here. This is the HyperDeck uh, HD Plus. Then I have the Ultimat down here and a Web Presenter 4K. Ethernet switch, a fan, and PDU distribution unit. <clears throat> Over on the back side, if we can roll this rack around, and let me move the light so you can see a little better. We have a bunch of Blackmagic Design HDMI to SDI converters, in addition to two SDI to HDMI converters over here. So I have a total of six inputs that I can go into the ATEM. So, so some of those inputs include the camera, the Mac, the iPhone, the iPad, and another Mac. Um, and then auxiliary outputs from both the Video Hub and the ATEM come out through here, and there's also two down here. We have uh, TRS jacks going in to form audio from my Rodecaster Duo. And I down below, I have a Sonnet Echo Thunderbolt PCIe enclosure running a DeckLink card that goes into a Mac Mini. Now, the Mac Mini used to be my primary machine until I purchased the M2 Max MacBook Pro that's over here. Fortunately, I bought it right before the M3 Max line was announced, so I missed out on the extra performance. Now, over here, I have an iPad Mini 4 that's running MixEffect, and that's acting as my OSC server. So when I control MixEffect using the Stream Deck, it's talking to the iPad Mini here, which is talking to the ATEM Constellation 2ME HD. Um, I have connected the iPad Mini 4 to an Ethernet cable to provide a more stable connection to the ATEM. Now, over here, I have an iPad Pro that has a USB webcam input that's showing my multi-view. So one of the great things about the Constellation and the Video Hub is that they have a lot of inputs, or inputs and outputs. So on the A10 Mini Extreme ISO, which is what I was using before, you have the eight inputs, but you only have two auxiliary outputs. But on the Constellation and the Video Hub, you have 20 outputs each, so that's 40 outputs. So I'm outputting the multi-view from the Constellation into this iPad here. So I can use this monitor here as my program monitor, so I can see what's happening, what's on program. But I can use this one as a multi-view. And over here, I have another iPad Pro that's running MixEffect. So I can do all my switching and stuff. I need to touch some buttons. I don't have to look at ATEM software control over on the Mac over here. Now, over here, I have an ATEM Mini Pro. The program output from the Constellation goes into the ATEM Mini. So when I connect to applications such as Zoom or FaceTime, I'm using the A10 Mini Pro. I also have the, an HDMI splitter from my camera that also goes in the A10 Mini Pro. So if I didn't want to turn on all this stuff here, I could just have the A10 Mini Pro, Constellation, Video Hub, all that stuff is turned off, uh, and I can still do Zoom calls, FaceTime calls with my, with my nice camera. I also have one of the outputs from the Video Hub 
into input one of the A10 Mini Pro. Um, and that allows me to see the monitor for the um, HyperDex, the web presenters, and the Ultimats, <coughs> as well as the multi views from the Constellation without getting that infinite kind of video look that you sometimes get. And finally, the, the last input I use for um, with this USB C hub, so I can plug in my iPad Pro and I can use Stage Manager and just do iPad stuff over here. As I mentioned before, I have a Rodecaster Duo right here. I used to have a Rodecaster Pro Generation 1, but I like the so small size of the Rodecaster Duo. For my teleprompter, I have a newer teleprompter that's uh, using an iPad Mini 6 generation that's connected to my Mac using Sidecar. So I've created a virtual Mac display um, and I've flipped the display. So actually when I see here, it's all in the correct orientation. And I can use this monitor, I can drag things into it, such as like QuickTime that's showing my, my A10 Mini Pro view, or I can bring in a zoom window or whatever. So this is uh, my kind of like poor man's replacement for the Elgato prompter. And I think it works pretty well. As I mentioned before, I have the MacBook Pro M2. I have the Stream Deck, everyone knows what a Stream Deck is. The Pro Display XDR and lights up here and down here to provide um, some more evening out for the green screen. All right, so, <clears throat> and headphones here to monitor the audio coming in from program. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the main view here. And as you can see, this is uh, the set that's behind me. But in reality, it looks like, it looks like this. I'm just behind a green screen right here. So if we take a look at all the inputs happening all at once, Again, in the upper left, you see the raw output from the camera, so the green screen. You see the composite view in the upper right, that's from the Ultimat. You see my iPad Pro running mix effect over here, and let's say I wanted to change um, one of the backgrounds, I could just tap this button right here, and it will change to play the, the Blackmagic background. Mix effect. Kind of shortcuts and automations. Take a look at some nice keyboards and all of these scenes I set up uh, with the physical set and I just recorded them for like 10 minutes to an hour and they just run on a loop on the hyperdeck. <clears throat> so I want to go show some Newtons over here or like an e or maybe I'm talking about Macintoshes. Um, I can tap this and then you can see them right here. And so it's great. I don't have to kind of rearrange the set every single time I'm doing a meeting. I just tap these buttons either on Mix effect or on the Stream Deck, and instantly I get uh, a great looking background. <clears throat> now, the beauty of um, the background and the Ultimat is that it creates a very good key. So, I'm going to show you real quick what the two different keys look like. So, let's take a look at the Ultimat. Okay. And now I'm going to go turn on the ATEM chroma key. So, ATEM uh, mini lineup and up have the advanced chroma key from Blackmagic. And it does a decent job of green screening. So I'm going to push this button right now. And now what you're seeing is the ATEMS chroma key running off of the, uh, the background that I have here. So I'm going to go switch, turn off the key. I'm going to turn off the key. And you can see I, I disappear from it because it's the current source is the hyperdeck. Um, and you can see it doesn't look that bad. Here's where it gets not so good. So you take a look at my hair. I have long hair. You can see that the, um, it's not very fine, the details. <clears throat> now, if we switch over to the Ultimat, you know, the key looks pretty good, even better. The blurred out areas are, are better uh, kind of keyed out. Wave my hand, it's not that bad. But take a look at the hair. See how those fine details are preserved with the key and the ultimate does a really good job. So again, I'm going to show you like before with the ATEM chroma key here and after. See the difference there? Now let's take a look real quick um, at the iPad. Switch the iPad on and then I'm going to enable the flying key. It's going to move me over to the corner there. So you can still see, um, maybe you can't see that, it's kind of hard to 
you can still see the not so good key. So let's take a look at the foreground. So if I just adjust this, you can see the with the advanced chroma key on the A10, the built-in software. I'm um, kind of getting rid of the foreground. And then you see the slight kind of edge around my shirt. I'm going to remove that with the background a little hard. And the key edge, actually the key edge, I'm going to do that. So that's just, I don't want to go too much like that. <clears throat> you can still see the hair is not the best right there. Um, spill suppression kind of gets rid of kind of some of the green that's kind of on my face. Same thing with flare suppression. Maybe like that. So as you can see, the built-in chroma key is not bad, um, but it's not as good as the Ultimat. So let's go switch back to the Ultimat. And again, Ultimat has a great, um, really good keying right there. A10 chroma key, not so good. But in a pinch, you know, if you have a green screen, you can use the ATEM's built-in chroma key and you'll get decent results. But let's take a look at what's happening in the Ultimat right now. So <clears throat> the Ultimat's interface is quite complicated, I will say. Uh, they do have a hardware-based controller, which looks very similar to this. You got knobs on the right and left of the screen for knobs. So in the software interface, the knobs kind of disappear depending on if you need them or not. Um, but in the hardware, you always have, obviously <laughs> knobs, physical knobs can disappear. So they just, uh, they don't do anything when you try to scroll them, rotate them. The most important button in the Ultimat is this auto screen sample. And that's kind of sets up like hundreds of different settings. So you don't have to like dicker with everything. Uh, and it gets a pretty good key, assuming you've lit the key, the background green screen fairly well. So let's go click this button and see what happens. So I'm gonna switch back to the main screen while I click this button. And you see the, the screen got a little brighter. I was running on a preset before that I had modified uh, specifically for this scene. So let's take a look at what the auto screen layout does. So holding my hands out like this, like doing this, that looks pretty good. I squeeze my hands like this, not bad. So we might actually like this, this look, um, this keyed look. So let's go switch to different backgrounds and see how they look. Take a look at this one. It's still pretty good. You can see my um, chair in the background shows through the set uh, quite well with these little holes in there. Go to this one, not bad. You can see a little bit of um, the key is not doing very well right above the top of the chair, as you can see here. So this is that auto screen um, layout design uh, from the Ultimat. So I'm gonna go switch back to my earlier preset. Let's go to number three. See, it got a little darker, but now you can see the chair is more filled in. You can't see the background behind it. Again, let's go to a different scene like that. Go to the default scene. So when you're adjusting with the Ultimat, you may need to dicker with some things and then you can save as a quick preset your settings. So you can adjust the matte settings. So you can set the sample kind of wall green and the floor green. You can adjust the veil, uh, which is like how much of the background shows up. So I can adjust this. You can see it's like, becoming more clear. I'm going to set it to minus 14. Seems to be the best setting for this particular view. You can adjust things in the foreground, like the black level, contrast, saturation, um, flare, which is like how much, uh, maybe kind of reducing the amount of kind of green that might be reflecting on you from the background, ambience. Um, and then with the background, you can adjust like black levels, contrast, saturation, advanced contrast. You can see the different levels here. So you can do a lot of dickering to get the key to look just right. So I've only had this device for a week, so I'm still learning all the ins and outs of it. As I said before, the interface is somewhat confusing because there's so much power behind it. But over time, I think I'll get to, to become more proficient in this. So let's go take a look again at the super source. So um, what we have here 
is let's go over here with the ultimat. So the ultimat <clears throat> has several inputs. So there's four different models of the ultimat. One, an ultimat 12 uh, mini, which is a small version that takes HDMI input for the camera. And then for backgrounds, you can only use still images. This particular one is the HD uh, plus, I think the ultimat 12 HD plus. Um, and that adds an additional SDI input for the background. So you can actually use a moving video uh, foreground and you have two garbage mats here. And then the two other ultimats, which can do 4K and 8K, add additional uh, mats and layers that you can put um, in front, superimpose in front of the view. Uh, it's much more capable. I wish I actually gotten that, uh, the 12G version, but this version works works quite well for my cases. I'm not doing like super multi-camera setups at the moment right now. <clears throat> uh, so we take a look at the foreground here. It's using the 5D4 input, my camera. And then the background right now is using the HyperDeck. So again, when I change the background on the HyperDeck, it use, changes that as the background. But I can also set it to a media player. So I have an image in media player one. Let's go to this. And you can see now it's this kind of all AI generated spaceship theme. So if I change the lights in the room to this, and then go back to the main program view, you can see that the image now looks uh, more lit and more consistent kind of with the background. So just by changing the lights and the background, you can actually do some, make some pretty interesting things here. So now I'm in space, yay, hey, woohoo. And again, the, the map might not be perfect, um, but I can adjust it to make it so that I'm like completely consistent and nothing is seeing through, passing through in the background. So I'm gonna switch the input back to the HyperDeck and I'm gonna change the lights back to normal lights. <clears throat> and we're back to the way it used to look. Switch back to my default look right here. Um, so again, Ultimat, you have background, foreground, and two garbage mats um, that you can use to adjust kind of the, the look of your, your view. All right, so let's go back to here. Uh, I saw some little shearing of the image. I don't know the Blackmagic camera. I don't know if the, the, H, the clean HDMI is the problem or if it's the problem with the cabling into the A10. Um, this green screen is the Elgato green screen XL. Um, it's pretty big, so it fills up the whole screen. My camera is the Canon 5D Mark IV, and I have actually a 20 to 70 zoom lens on it. Before I was using a 35 millimeter, um, but I do and want to experiment with changing the focal length from time to time so I can get even more looks into this view. So this has been my home studio update for 2024. I'm very much looking forward to all the things that I can produce and create uh, with this new hardware uh, and software. And I'm looking forward to making more tools for the video production community so they can make the most out of the hardware that they have. So thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.